All right. Welcome to Career Bound. This is the new podcast by Praxis. Uh, Mitchell and I, we are the CEO and COO of Praxis. Praxis is a radically practical alternative to college for growth-minded students who want to launch their careers in the real world. We essentially help you know, ambitious, growth-minded young adults get their career started, take them through that you know, initial early career discovery process, build valuable skills, access cool opportunities, and bypass you know, the traditional uh, four-year college trajectory to do that. So we're, we're really excited to launch this new podcast. Um, our plan here is that we'll, we'll be going live every week on Tuesdays. And we'll be, you know, talking about kind of all things career growth, professional development. We'll have a, you know, mix of, you know, cool guests that are, you know, building, you know, really kind of cool, interesting entrepreneurial careers for themselves, whether that's, you know, startup founders, solopreneurs, um, people that are, you know, leading different teams at, at companies, et cetera. We'll also be giving you kind of a behind the scenes look on what we're building here at Praxis. So we'll be you know, featuring Praxis staff. We'll have alumni of the program on. We'll, we'll even have current students on and talk to them about what their experience is like. The goal here is to provide kind of a, you know, just a, a dedicated space to talk about uh, career growth, professional development, you know, specifically kind of in this like higher education space. You know, his, historically academia has been you know, very separate from gaining experience, getting started in the real world for young people. And, you know, we, we've been running Praxis now for a number of years, and we're excited about kind of being, you know, the leaders in this new space of career-driven higher education. So we'll be uh, bringing you interesting people to talk to, get some, you know, talk about tactics on how to build, build a career best for you, how to you know, kind of take more control of your own personal development, your education, et cetera. So welcome aboard. Mitchell, what's up, man? What are we, uh, what are we planning on talking about today for episode number one? Well, quite a few things I definitely want to get in, into the weeds on in terms of like what we're building a Praxis, sort of the vision, things we've learned from the first few years. But I think it's just refreshing to be hitting record again and trying out a, a new format here. I like this um, careers and coffee sort of format that we're, we're breaking out this, this morning, at least in, for the, for this initial episode. But, you know, we've, we've, we've tried several different podcasts and covered a lot, a lot of different topics, but kind of these same core themes continue to emerge in the content, not just a podcast, but the content that we've created at Praxis over the years. Like there is this big focus on helping individuals pave pave their own way in their career. It's sort of this this different take from traditional academia, traditional higher ed, traditional like uh, conveyor belt institutionalized way about going about building your life and career um, that I think has, has always been near and dear to the ethos of praxis and something that I think more and more people are hungry uh, for every year. Uh, we've seen this shift, like more and more people are looking for um, what, what you said right at the beginning is like radically practical alternatives to sort of the prepackaged way of doing things. And that's, you're seeing that across every dimension. Um, you know, especially, you know, we've been in this, we've been in this game for a while. Um, Praxis has been around for a while. We've seen a lot of different companies and entrance into this market of people trying to solve different parts of the higher education problem. Um, and they're, more problems than I care to count, like you know, everything from from student debt to the actual effectiveness of, of college as a way to find your thing, as a way to build the skills you need, as a way to access not only uh, stable careers, but like careers that offer upside. So it's it's exciting, you know, to be flipping record on again and, and breaking down some of those uh, some of those challenges that we're definitely tackling here at Praxis, but also like talking uh, aside from just like what we're building at Praxis, talking about like a lot of the practical, radically practical things that individuals can do in their own lives and career to sort of, you know, pave their own way. So, yeah, let's let's dive into, you know, kind of like why Praxis exists. Um, we we kind of want to make this like the vision update episode 
set the tone for, you know, future episodes of the podcast, how we'll be, you know, talking, you know, not just about the program, but we want to be connecting with, um, you know, more experienced um, professionals who are building careers in a, in a more like Praxis way that aligns with like our ethos here at Praxis. And, you know, you, you've mentioned a lot of it already, but, you know, from, from my point of view, like what, so just to give the, the quick background on my relationship with Praxis. So you and I have been running the company for the past three years. Uh, before that, I was an employee of Praxis since, you know, essentially, you know, I joined the, the, the company a year after it launched. And before that, I was, you know, one of the very first students in our very first cohort all the way back in 2014. And what got me fired up about being involved in Praxis was the fact that it it represented for me like this different approach to building a career and ultimately like taking control of building the life that you want. Um, I, you know, I was a rel reasonably smart kid growing up. I was really competitive, you know, with sports and everything. I enjoyed learning, but there was always something about the school system that just rubbed me the wrong way. And I think a lot of that was, it just felt like I had a lack of agency over what I chose to learn about, what I chose to study. And I remember, you know, going from high school to college, I was really excited about jumping into college because it was kind of framed to me as this, you know, it's going to be very different than what high school was like. You are going to have a lot more control over what you study. And, you know, I had that idealized version of college in my head of like, Oh yeah, I'm going to spend, you know, four years kind of, you know, having some of that like self-discovery experience, figuring out what I want to do in the world, figuring out what topics are most interesting to me. And then I'm going to be surrounded by all these other people that, you know, have, you know, high levels of intellectual curiosity or figuring things out for them. They're coming from different backgrounds and stuff. And it was in that first semester where I realized like, oh man, like this is very much you know, the, the same as high school. And, you know, over the years running Praxis, that's, that's a very common note that, that we both hear from, you know, young adults that we're talking to. And, you know, just that's, that's really what I was coming from when I was introduced to Praxis and I heard about it. And it, it was the first time I felt excited and confident that there was actually going to be a better, kind of like educational experience to help people like myself who, you know, I'm, I, I think I have ambition for my career and I've always had that, but I had no idea what direction I wanted to pursue. I had no idea what kinds of careers I wanted, you know, to, to kind of build for myself. I knew more about what I wanted to avoid. Um, I, I wanted to avoid more of like the cookie cutter, uh, corporate path. My growing up, my dad was in corporate finance and, you know, he loved it, but there was nothing about that that was particularly interesting or inspiring to me. And I knew I always wanted my work to be an extension of like my values and, and kind of like my life rather than, you know, just kind of having that balance of like, oh, I'm, I'm working to live. I'm working just to have, you know, good financial outcome so I can do the other things I want to do in my life. Like it was really important to me at a, at a young age that whatever I ended up doing career wise was going to be something that I was, you know, personally passionate about. Um, yep. So with Praxis coming, you know, into existence, it was the first time I felt like, Hey, this, this kind of program can actually help me figure out how to get my career started how to develop, you know, skills, habits, mindsets that are going to kind of equip me for longer term professional and personal growth. And then I had the opportunity to join the team, you know, after going through the program myself. So um, excited just to dive in a little bit more about what we've learned over the past, you know, three years, especially since we've been running the business. But I want to I want to get into now, like, what are those pain points that we are seeing that like young people have around that like typical college age that is kind of making them question like, hey, is college going to help me get to where I want to be? And what what are the actual things, you know, in terms of 
resources, support, et cetera, that we have found like young people are really starting to seek out. So um, let's, let's talk first about what, what pain points are we commonly seeing that, you know, you know, high quality, ambitious, growth minded individuals are kind of coming up against with, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of not just college itself, but, you know, kind of at, at this certain life stage, when you're 17 to 22, 23, you're trying to figure out how to kind of best transition into adulthood, how to, you know, get your professional life going. Yeah, well, I, I think this is a fun topic to 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 get into the weeds on. And I, I want to go beyond just the obvious, but I think the obvious things are the ones worth worth stating um, right out of the gates. Like one of the most obvious ones today, and I'm I'm very long on on Gen Z uh, because of this, is like this this somewhat hesitation to go mortgage your entire future by taking out five to six figures of student debt with precarious outcomes associated with college. And I think that this is like young adults that I talk to today, um, I, I get fired up every time I hear a young adult who's like, yeah, I, I'm not sure college is the right thing. One, I may not have a clear idea of what I want, but two, like this idea of starting my future with an unknown amount of student debt seems like a very impractical way to go about it. And that's sort of, uh, that's sort of accented by not knowing exactly the destination I'm, I'm working towards. When I hear a young adult say this, I, it, it gets me fired up because one, I'm a little bit envious of, of the maturity they have. I wish that I had that, that level of maturity when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old, uh, kind of on the precipice of, of my entire future. And the, the fact that people are beginning to wake up to this idea of like, is this a smart financial decision? I think that's sort of a, a, the thing that causes people to do a double take. It's terrible that it's gotten like as bad as it has for a lot of people who've, who've gone through college. Like they had to rack up, you know, ridiculous amounts of, of debt. And there's, you know, what, two some trillion dollars of student debt uh, total, like the total national student debt burden. Like it, it's bad that it had to get that bad before people started to wake up about the actual financial cost of college. But I, I do believe that it's it's net positive that, for whatever reason, that's causing people to to double take before they just, you know, before they just like resign themselves to four years, four to six years. Um, if you look at average time to complete a degree plus the student debt, the other that that's one of the obvious things. But the, the second big obvious thing that I think a lot of young adults face and I I can re relate to this so much. Um, you know, I felt like I felt this pressure from like 17 to 25 of this little, this like unstated uh, urgency to feel like you have the entire plan figured out. And you see this, I think that this is just as prevalent as ever, is you feel like this intense pressure to not only have a plan, but to have this fully articulated plan all the way into the future of like, I need to know what I want to do for the rest of my life. I need to know the actual avenue I'm going to take to you know, manifest that plan in the real world. And I see, I see this so much because I was like your typical high achiever coming out of high school. And so when I, when I, when I come across those young adults in particular, that they were high achieving academically, um, they feel like this intense frustration and this trap that they're in this, they're in this trap of like, I have to go to college because that's, even if I don't know what I want to get, that's like part of this plan. I, I can't make a mistake on this plan. I think it's also a little like there's a little bit of a sunk cost fallacy there because it's like, hey, I've been playing this game and I've yeah. been winning at this game, you know, school and in a more like academic approach for essentially my entire life. It's it's really frustrating to, you know, when you start having those realizations or you start questioning, like, is this going to be the thing that helps me? kind of like thrive in the real world eventually. And then it's really challenging to be like, okay, like if not this, then what? And then to be able to make that leap, like, hey, I'm actually going to go in a different direction. Yeah, the sunk cost is, is definitely a big part of it is like, I might as well just go ahead and get a degree. You know, what's the worst that can happen? At least I have that. There's like, it, it, this, this sort of plays out in a lot of different common arguments. But I, I think even, you know, beyond just, 
sort of the, I got to keep playing this game. There, there's like, there's this intense misunderstanding that it like, you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to fall behind. And so it's like, well, I want to go to college because even if I don't have the the plan figured out, even if I don't know how, how to go take an alternate path, like I've been told my entire life that this is the next step on this journey. And if I don't go do it now, I'll be one year behind. I'll be two years behind. And I think this, this, that pressure is entirely unnecessary, but I think it, it paints a, a false picture of reality too. That's just not true. Even outside of college, like people, you know, whether you go to college or not, once you get out into the real world, I think you become, you, 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 you crash into this wall of, of, of truth, which is like, most people don't know what's going on. They don't have this bigger thing they're working on. People are sort of making it up as they go. They're making a lot of mistakes and trying to sort of carve their own path. And I think, you know, this, this goes into schooling, but also sort of the narrative about college is like this, this idea that like mistakes are not part of the journey. And I think that that's something that, you know, I, when I talk to young adults and I I had to learn this the hard way too, is like, it's okay to make mistakes. And in fact, it's best to go try a bunch of stuff when you're just starting out, when you have like time and energy and, and interest, you have the ability to, to like course correct quickly. That's, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm most optimistic about, like getting that message out and, and reaching more people is like, it's okay to make mistakes, go make them, go try as many things as you can cross some things off the list, but don't feel like you have to like lock yourself into this four to six year, $200,000 decision just because you don't know how, like what to do right now. That's, that's probably like the worst decision you can make is like locking yourself into this, you know, financial commitment for the next 20 to 30 years when you don't have it figured out. Yeah. I think what we come across pretty much every day when we're talking to, you know, young people that are either in, in the program already or, you know, in, you know, new to the program, they're trying to get more information, et cetera, is a, co- a conversation we we pretty much have with everyone is like, what does an ideal like career discovery process look like? And, you know, school like college offers a hypothesis of what a career discovery process is. It, you know, yeah. the, the bare bones of it is, hey, you come in to college at, you know, 18 years old, you're going to pick a major, you're going to eventually commit to that major, you're going to get a degree that's going to lead to, you know, what your first job is. And then that's going to lead to, you know, what the next 20 to 30 years of your career looks like. Um, That is, you know, in my opinion, like that's a pretty awful way to set up, you know, a ambitious young person in terms of like how to best approach the career discovery process. What we talk a lot with young people about is like, hey, like, like you're saying, like early on in your career, the earlier on you are, like you should be experimenting a lot. You should be focused on, you know, gaining experience, learning from that experience, learning more about like what you did like about it, what you didn't like about it. You know, you should be picking up some valuable skills along the way. And then you're constantly, you know, kind of like iterating on that where it's like, hey, I went into a company, you know, I did one kind of job. Um, you know, I got a, you know, I, I spent a year there. I, you know, got exposed to like their company culture, their environment. You know, I did, you know, consistent work for them. I, I picked up some skills and now like after six months, after a year, you can reflect on, you know, Hey, like, what did I like about that experience? What did I not like about it? Maybe there's other things I'm learning about outside of my job. And now you have so much more information to work with, to, you know, kind of take the next small step in your career. And if you do that enough times, you know, by the time you're five years, 10 years into your career in the real world, you're going to have so much more information to work off of than if you were just on that college path for, you know, four to six years. Um, So I think that's a big thing. Like, and when we talk to young people about it, it's, it becomes, I think there's a big like sigh of relief of like, okay, good. Like I actually don't have to figure everything out right now. I don't have to identify what I think my like dream career path is going to be. If I can just focus, 
you know, I'm putting, you know, one foot in front of the other in terms of, you know, getting, getting experience, learning new skills, et cetera, you know, kind of play the long game. And I think that's, that's a big part of our, you know, how we set up the program is to set our students up for success. Like, Hey, you know, it's not about like, we're going to, you're going to land your dream job and, you know, start on your dream career path through this program. It's the best way to look at the program. You know, what, what you're going to do over the next 12 months is like, you're here to build a career foundation for yourself. And, and that's a combination of gaining legitimate experience, um, you know, learning some valuable skills. I think the biggest one is just like, you know, through that experience, through, you know, the curriculum we have in place, through the workshops, through, you know, interacting with other students and alumni in the program, et cetera, it's gaining context into like what the career landscape even looks like, like what yeah. opportunities are out there? What are people doing that, you know, I have, I feel some kind of resonation with five years, 10 years, 15 years into their own careers. And what can I learn from that? And then I can, you know, kind of make those decisions on like, hey, what what kinds of jobs would be best for me to get started in? You know, how do I, you know, what are my priorities right now? Like for some people in the program, it's like, hey, I, I don't care about like what industry or what specific, you know, role I get started in. What I'm really excited about is like, I want to move to a cool city that's growing where I can be, you know, meeting other like like-minded young people. And I want to work, you know, for you know, a growing company that I'm generally interested in what they do, but it's more about like getting that overall professional experience. Um, and I think, you know, that's something that like college just doesn't address because it's kind of forcing you into these set paths, uh, you know, with their, you know, programs their degree programs and their majors and stuff. And I think, you know, kind of the best version of Praxis, it's not about, teaching our students like specific skills to get a specific kind of job. It's about like, it's about gaining that context. And like, it's about like kind of developing like career development, career building skills. Like you want to come out of the program. Yes. There's like certain tangible outcomes. Like, Hey, I have a really good job. I'm learning from it. And you know, I'm becoming more valuable as a professional. I'm learning more about what my interests are, but it's more like, Hey, do I have the confidence? Do I have the knowledge? Do I have the resources, um, you know, available to me to like keep learning and growing as I figure out what I'm, you know, more and more interested in? Yeah, when you were when you were talking, it made me just kind of <laughs> another one of the big beefs that I have with college. It brought to mind is this idea of like what I what I like to call like artificial goalposts. Um, when we think about like what's the most practical way to go start your adult life and career, I think in terms of like, go find clarity, clarity, do activities that at least allow you to build momentum while you're figuring it out. That doesn't have to be like without aim. Um, like it doesn't have to be this completely like neb nebulous thing of like, I'm not going to go to college. I'm going to do all these other things. Um, clarity can be a really valuable goal, even if you don't know exactly what it is you're aiming at. Like the thing is when you first get out in the real world, pick a target and, the, and reverse engineer from it. That could be like, I wanna go get valuable skills and build some experience while I'm figuring out what it is that I wanna do. And I'm going to avoid financial entrapment while I do that. So like I'm gonna earn money instead of taking on student debt. But this idea of like artificial goalposts is very relevant to the conversation about college. I think this is one of the pain points a lot of young adults feel is like, the aim in college is finishing. It's like the goal is to graduate. And I think even, even if people deceive themselves, like I'm going to college to get X, Y, Z job or to break into X, Y, Z career, like the ultimate thing, like you're working towards when you are a student is like, I want to get done with this, this phase. It's very detached from the actual thing, because I think if people got actually brutally honest with, what does it take to go do this stated goal of break into career, get X job? You would realize like, I probably don't have to endure four years of torture and like boredom in order to go dip my foot in the water. But that's, that's one of the pain points I think is like, 
students, especially for people that have gotten into college and they feel like their experience is not amounting to what they hoped it would be, is it's, it's like this artificial goal that they're working toward. And it feels somewhat meaningless and pointless, futile towards like their actual future of like, I'm aiming to get this credential. I, I Instead, I want to feel like I'm actually making momentum. I want to feel like I'm getting in the game right now. But instead, they feel like they're in this kind of like holding cell for the next yeah. four years where they're not allowed. They don't have permission to go participate in the real world until right. they've, they've checked this box. And that's one of the most frustrating things I think, you know, people. And I would say it's probably even if not like documented, it's probably one of the leading causes of, of dropout too, which, you know, that could be a positive thing in many cases as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I think over the past eight to 10 years working with young people in this space, like it's, it's very clear. A lot of people have, a lot of young people have those like very common kind of existential, not always like crises level, but like big <laughs> existential struggles and questions. Angst and I think it kind of comes back to like, there's not to go uh, like full Jordan Peterson here or anything, but like, you know, a lot of young people just have like a lack of purpose and it's hard for them to find that purpose while they're in that college, when they're on that like college conveyor belt of like, yeah, like get good grades, get your you know, get your degree based off your major. And then, you know, in terms of figuring things out in the real world, like that will all come after. And I think, you know, what from day one of Praxis, like our goal has been to build an education experience that is based on your, like how you can thrive and grow in the real world. So we, we always want the program to be as connected to like, what, you know, how do you want to set up your life, you know, long-term? What's valuable for you to figure out now? Like, of course, there's a intellectual component to that. Like, it's really valuable to be, you know, an intellectually curious person who's capable of, you know, figuring out what, what topics interest them, how to dive deeper into those things, et cetera. Um, but there's also a lot more practical, you know, kind of items that people are really focused on at 18 to 22, 23 of just like, Hey, how can I gain financial independence as quickly as possible? How can I gain that experience where I'm moving to a new city, setting up my life? I have to figure out, you know, how to, you know, get an apartment, how to find roommates while also holding down like my first career oriented, you know, job experience and everything. Like those are the kinds of things that breed, you know, confidence in yourself to like keep learning and growing and stuff. So um, that's, that's been a big focus of the program, but yeah, I think, a big, again, we're talking about pain points here. Like a big pain point is I think a lot of young people end up going to college, not because it's truly like what they think is going to be the thing that gets them to where they want to be afterwards, but it's, it's more set up like, oh, this is just what everybody does by default after high school. Yeah. And, you know, the way our program sub is like the people, the students that are coming in our program they're here for a specific reason. They want to take this specific approach to getting their careers, getting their lives started. And I think about kind of these like core elements of what they want out of our program experience, it's a mixture of, hey, like a direct route and access to like real professional opportunities that, you know, have upside that I can continue growing from. I don't, I want to get out of that cycle of, Hey, I, I've gotten some good work experience, but it's been, you know, in serving positions at restaurants. It's been, you know, barista at coffee shops. It's been working in retail and customer service. They want to be going into career mode, but there's also the like catch 22 of like, how do I get started when I don't know exactly what I want to do? And I yeah. think that's, that's also a big thing is like, here are the things you can do. Here are the kinds of opportunities you can start gaining experience in that don't just set you into one specific, you know, long-term linear path. Like it's really valuable to go get, you know, two years of experience at a, you know, fast paced startup in any number of roles, sales, marketing, customer experience. And that is not locking you into one set career path, but it is going to help you establish like a foundation for your personal life. Like, Hey, like, 
you're making decent money, you can live on your own, you have some financial freedom under your belt, and you can you know keep learning about like your career interests, you're developing real relationships that can help you long term as well. Um, so yeah, access to those kinds of opportunities. I think guidance and support from people who have done the kinds of things that you might be interested in, rather than being in a academic environment where your primary, you know, mentors are professors that, you know, if you're interested in the world of academia as a professional career, yeah. like that's a great place for you. But if you're interested in more, you know, business or entrepreneurial opportunities, it's, it's frankly just not enough to have like your economics and your business and your marketing professors access to like, you need to be learning from people who are out in the field, out in the real world, doing the kinds of things you're doing. And not just in terms of set like career areas, like, oh, I, I think I'm interested in marketing. So I want to learn from people that are doing marketing. Like, absolutely. There's a component of that. That's important. But also like people that are five, 10, 15 years ahead of you. And that just have generally like shared values of like, how you want to approach building your career and building your life. Like those are the kinds of people you want to surround yourself with and, and, you know, learn from on a regular basis. So that's, that's another big focus of the program. And that's something like we know our, our students really want from their program experience. Um, so yeah, there's the access to like legitimate career opportunities. There's, you know, that kind of like certain level of guidance and support from people who are doing the things you might be interested in doing that have shared values with you. And then I think it's like, you know, not to, you know, it, it can sometimes feel fluffy to say this, but like a, a really strong sense of community. Like they want yeah. to be surrounded by their peers that also have that like growth mindset that also aren't afraid to, you know, hop out of, you know, this like traditional college system and, you know, essentially have the courage to like, build more so like on their own with the support of something like Praxis. But, um, you know, it's really, really clear, like young people are starving for, for a stronger sense of community and they want to be able to build, you know, genuine, you know, authentic relationships with, with other people that are in the same, you know, life stage as them, or maybe, you know, just a couple steps ahead of them. I would say like, those are the big things that, that students are looking for out of, you know, what, what their ideal version of higher education would be. And, you know, when I, when I take a step back and think about like the long-term future of Praxis, I always kind of come back to that question of like, what do, you know, above average growth minded, you know, young people want from a higher education experience to like thrive in the real world, like get started, you know, get into like adult life, get into career mode, and then actually like continue to, you know, grow professionally and personally from there. I think that's, that's kind of a really, like, it's important to me that we always keep that in mind of like, hey, we are building the best, you know, program experience that helps people get started. And then we're, we're building the best you know, network and community to help people continue to learn and grow alongside, you know, their their peers and and mentors that they can learn from. So let's on uh, that one, note, like let's talk note. about I got like, one more. I got one more yeah, point. Yeah. One more note to add to that point. We can round out sort of the pain points. Is like what you're talking about. They, you know, young adults they want independence. They want autonomy. They want the opportunity to work on challenging problems and to be surrounded by peers that are pushing them to be best, you know, to be a better version of themselves and, and challenge them intellectually and engage them rather than the boredom of, of college. But I think one other really big contrast to what we're building at Praxis to like contrast it against higher education that sort of underpins all those things is like the, the most ambitious, far-reaching, hardworking young adults, they also want to escape the infantilization of higher education and the school system in general. They don't want to be treated like kids. They want the opportunity to prove that they can go work on challenging problems and, and deliver. They want to have the opportunity to have a seat at the table and to have a conversation 
and as like an intellectual peer, as somebody that's that's a learner alongside somebody else who is on their journey learning, rather than being talked down to by a professor or a teacher or somebody in an authority position, it's not because they haven't necessarily a disdain for, for authority as well, though that's how I think a lot of people view it in the world today is like, you know, problems with Gen, Gen Z and millennials is they don't respect authority. It's all, it's, it's that they want the opportunity to go gain independence and autonomy over their lives. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to participate in value creation. They don't want to just be stuck in a classroom bored, being told what to do for the rest of their lives. They want to prove that they have agency over their own lives. That's a very, very deep, like, deep seated longing that I think a lot of young adults have. It, it's like, again, not to be fluffy, but it, it is something that people are looking for today that like college and higher education is just not delivering on is like the ability to go kind of like write your own story. Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, let's, let's talk about what, how we kind of think about the future of, of Praxis, the future of this program and, you know, kind of larger community that, that we're, we've been developing. So we're, we're coming up on nine years of running, you know, live cohorts. Um, you know, the discussions that you and I have been having more recently over the last few months is like, you know, what is, what does the next 10 years look like for, for Praxis? So I'll set the stage here. Um, you know, over close to coming up on nine years of running cohorts, we are right around, I think we just passed uh, 500 graduates and, and current students that have come through the program. And, you know, we've talked a lot about like what we've learned insight wise about like those pain points and what, you know, this like high caliber young person wants out of a higher education experience, et cetera. Um, and the program has kind of proven like, hey, like, yeah, you can absolutely build an alternative to, you know, the traditional college experience to help people get their, get their career started. We, we have, you know, hundreds of, you know, awesome, exciting alumni stories, outcomes that have been produced. We've seen alumni that are three years, five years, you know, eight years out of the program that are thriving in their careers. And it's not because, you know, they, they don't have a degree and the degree, yeah. um, it, it's clear, like when you look at those individuals, like the degree did not impact their career trajectory. Um, they were able to get off to a faster start. They were able to you know, run more experiments because they had more, you know, financial flexibility. They had the, you know, probably biggest asset of time on their hands. And, you know, we're, we see now like, okay, like here's the core program structure that can help someone go from, hey, I'm a promising, you know, 18, 20, 22 year old. I might have some ideas of what I want to do career wise, but I'm, I'm really open-minded. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, maybe I have some good experience under my belt. I have some quality soft skills that I can offer, but there's nothing that I can really tangibly point to and be like, this is what I can add, you know, to a company value wise, et cetera. And it's like, Hey, with a little bit of, you know, skill building through a structured curriculum, you know, with a little bit of, you know, workshops, learning about different career opportunities, a little bit of support and guidance and helping you land that first job. And then a little bit you know, more support and guidance to help you continue to learn and grow, like you can be successful. Um, the way I think about it though, is like, all right, like we have learned like what works in terms of, you know, a career driven higher education experience. And I, I really think about two things long-term is, one is how do we continue to build the best program experience and the best community, long-term like networking community that our students have access to, to just like thrive at the, you know, individual level, both in their careers and, you know, in certain aspects, like more personally. And then the second thing I think about is like, we want like over the next 10 years, I absolutely want Praxis to be like the dominant brand in this like career driven higher education space. And I think it's it's a mixture of like, there are core things that we will always do that are kind of like very close to our hearts and like what we know, of like how to help somebody succeed and thrive in the real world using this approach that will never go away from 
from the program. And then I also know like, hey, when Praxis is, you know, instead of, you know, at, at the level we're at now where we're doing, you know, between 100 and 125 students every year coming to the program, like we absolutely want to grow and scale where it's like, hey, Praxis is doing, you know, 500 students a year, 1,000 students a year and above. Like that's a different level that than we're at now. And there's like certain things that we'll need to figure out that we'll need to, you know, kind of improve upon the program experience to, to reach more people, to, to serve more people and stuff. But yeah, in my mind, like the goal for the next 10 years is Praxis is this very strong, clear brand of like, if you want, if, if this approach to getting your career started, continuing to learn and grow, you know, in a much more kind of like, you know, where you have more control over your career and your educational choices, I would say, then we want people to know like, hey, like this is where you go if if you want to kind of take that radically more practical approach to higher education. Yeah, for sure. And so, so a couple other points that I, I, I think are worth sneaking in here, like what that boils down to, it's great outcomes for young adults in terms of like what this means for their career by choosing an alternative. And that, that doesn't always mean a specific job opportunity. Everybody is on their own individual journey. Outcomes could mean I have more clarity about what I want to do, about the problems I want to work on, and the types of businesses I want to work in, or like how I want to build my life and career. Uh, I think that that is a direct byproduct, whether it's a t tangible job outcome or sort of a combination of all, all of these things. I think it's a direct byproduct of gaining increased exposure and context about the world around you, learning what's possible out there, getting a, a better sense for the career landscape. And like, it's, it's part like inspiration. You have to know what's possible in order to like be able to go manufacture this sort of plan of attack. To, to build your career. And I think that that's what a lot of young people are missing first and foremost, is just like context about what's even possible in a career. And so they default to sort of these prepackaged templates that, that college provides. I wanna be a doctor or lawyer, or whatever other sort of prepackaged plan that equals the American dream. I think that it's, it's, I gotta know what's possible. And then I wanna be surrounded by other people that are working towards those kind of things. So. Like I said first, it's it's outcomes and opportunity, but community is also another integral part, like continuing to expand the social component of the program experience, getting people plugged in, um, you know, to, to a group of peers who are working on challenging problems, who are working towards their own personal professional goals, and also like helping them tap into that next step to that, that next uh, level of, of professional contact, like the person who is three to five years ahead of them down a path that they're interested in exploring. That's such a critical component for young adults. And like seeing, having somebody who's already doing what you wanna do to learn from, even if it's, you know, sort of indirect mentorship or direct mentorship, that's a wildly different, that's a wildly different experiment or experience than just like learning about it, like hearing book knowledge regurgitated from somebody who's not in the field, um, like traditional academia, but, it's sort of all those different components, I think, continue to drive, you know, awesome, awesome results across all of those is, you know, it's going to continue to level up the program experience, but allow us to continue to, to scale what, you know, what has already been really good outcomes for most people. Yeah, let, let's talk about two big components a little bit specifically. Um, so you mentioned the community, I want to talk about that. And then there's also on the other side is like formalize, like continuing to develop and formalize more and more our hiring network. Um, so first of all, on community, you know, right now how the community works is, you know, we have an online community platform that our students are using as they go through the program. That's where like their day-to-day -day program communications is, is being, you know, taken place, et cetera. Alumni also have access to the online community platform. Alumni can come back to our like weekly workshops where we bring in guest speakers. They have access to different kind of like professional development topical uh, groups. And, you know, there we see like alumni connect with each other, both in formal and informal ways, you know, after they go through the program and stuff. Um, one of the big things that's been on our minds lately is 
you know, right now the program is 100% remote. So you're everything you're getting from Praxis specific, like directly is, is done online digitally. Um, and then, you know, the, the kinds of jobs that you're getting, they could be, you know, in person, they could be remote. Um, what we're starting to develop a much stronger kind of opinion on is like, there needs to be an in-person component to the community. Up to this point, what that's looked like is, you know, we'll, we'll do one big in-person kind of like social event for like a weekend every single year. And the goal of that is just to get as many like alumni and students together, hanging out, building those relationships in person. And then we also, you know, kind of do more like community driven regional meetups, you know, from, from time to time. Um, and those have been really successful. Like the feedback we always hear is like, oh my God, like it was so great to spend time in person with other Praxians, other, you know, alumni and students. And, you know, the more we can have that, you know, we're, we're just like craving that more and more essentially. So, um, you know, we, we have kind of big ambitions for um, what that in-person component could look like. We've discussed everything from, you know, hey, like, does it make sense five years from now to be running, you know, in-person programs of Praxis? Does it make sense to be doing, you know, more regular kind of, you know, formal, you know, week events where Praxis students and alumni can get together, hang out for a week, work together for a week, you know, kind of explore a new city together. Um, you know, does it make sense to specifically, you know, kind of like develop the program where like in each of your regions, there's going to be like more community driven activities and, and events for people, you know, in Praxis Southeast and Praxis West Coast and Praxis Texas. Uh, different things like that. We know there's, we know we want there to be a stronger, more formal in-person component to the community. We're going to be kind of testing different things out over the next few years. Um, but I, I definitely think that's something, you know, my, my opinions on this have kind of reversed where, you know, if you would have asked me three, five years ago, I would have said like, hey, no way. Like, the re, like remote is the future of, of everything. Like there's going to be more remote opportunities. People are going to be more accustomed to doing like remote educational options. Um, that's how you scale the program. And all those things have come true. Like, you know, there are way more remote opportunities in terms of jobs there. You know, everybody has had some kind of online educational experience at this point. And I think a big insight from that is like that, in some ways that falls short. Like people, you just can't replace that in-person experience in terms of, you know, your ability to connect, relate and develop relationships. Um, so we're, we're really excited and we are committed to like figuring out what that looks like for our community specifically. Um, I think that's, that's how you really set yourself apart from, you know, all these different, you know, both formal like college programs, as well as, um, alternative, you know, routes to, to college as well. Um, and then secondly, want to, well, sorry. Um, want to get your quick thoughts on that Mitchell. Like what, what is it about that? Like in-person component to, you know, like the long-term community that you feel is uh, really valuable to tap into? Yeah. I just think like uh, when it comes to building rapport, that's much done much more effectively done when you're when you're in person when you have more than just one dimension to relate to to, to people um you know when when you think about like when i think about the best professional relationships that i have it's it's rarely just over work like it's not just because this person is my coworker or peer or you know somebody that's doing what i'm doing at a different company it's also like this this sense of like shared overlap um, you know, in your own sort of personal professional journey. And so I think that's probably the, 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 the biggest thing, first and foremost, is like being able to build a dip, deeper level of camaraderie and rapport with other people who are going through all of the same sim or similar challenges as you, not just trying to figure out their own career in education. Like they are, they are on this path and that like, you don't get that deep level of, of intimacy and like, um, that type of rapport 
by just, you know, hopping on Zoom. And I think that you see this right now over the past two to three years with the way a lot of students have, have responded um, to colleges going online, you know, during like 2020, 2021, like a, a lot of people are like, I'm, I'm out. That's not what I want. I want this deep sense of connection with other people. A community and connection and engagement with other people is, is really important. I think above and beyond that, though, it does offer the opportunity to accelerate growth when you're like, when you're in a, when you have connections with other people that extend beyond just the, the digital, um, especially when it comes to like your first or first several early career experiences, like being able to be in the office with other people um, or, or in a city with other young professionals, it offers opportunities that um, they're not insurmountable remote, but they, they don't happen as organically. And I think that that's, that's something that I am excited about is like giving people the avenue to go tap into those same things. Like I, I, I look back to my own early career and, you know, a lot of the development that happened working in an office full of other like ambitious, hungry, young professionals who were united towards some big common goal. And that's when you're in the trenches with other people. And it's, 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 more challenging to manufacture that same sort of level of intensity remotely. It's not insurmountable. It's just challenging. Um, it's it's more challenging when you're just starting out than it is after you have some experience and sort of you've developed that rapport. And so that's one of the things that I am most excited about is like expanding sort of the 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 continuity, I guess, um, of the program experience for people. Yep. Nice. Well, let's wrap up there. We'll we'll talk about you know future plans for hiring network, other components of the program on on future episodes. Uh, we're really excited to get this podcast kick off, and we'll we're going to have some exciting guests over the next you know coming coming episodes over the next few months here. So we'll be uh, talking about different career growth, professional development topics. We'll. We'll keep, you know, doing kind of update episodes on, you know, how we're developing the program and, and the network of Praxis and everything. But, you know, really, really excited to be chatting with everyone um, and kind of using this podcast as like, hey, like, you know, we we see Praxis like we're we're going to be the the dominant, you know, brand in this kind of new developing career driven higher education space. Um, and we want to be you know, kind of keeping people update on what we're doing as well as handing out, you know, awesome tactical advice on, you know, career building, professional development, how you can kind of take more control over your, your own education and your career. So, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next episode next week, same time. <laughs>